Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live session. And my name is Meryl. I'm a Franchise Support Coordinator at Kuman. This afternoon, we will be discussing with you how you can become a Kuman instructor, or what steps should you take in regards to the application process, and what can you expect in, uh, in becoming a Kuman instructor and in opening your own Kuman Center. So this afternoon, to help me with the discussion, I have here two lovely ladies. Um, first is Ms. Julia Ertel. She's our brand and marketing manager at Kumon Germany. And our very special guest, Ms. Sefta Yusa. She's a Kumon instructor in one of the most successful Kumon centers here in Germany. So um, she's running the center here in Neuss Weckhofen. So you can see here a few photos of her Kumon Center. So probably if you've been there, if you're a student or if you're a parent of SEFTA, um, your, student, your children are enrolled here, you probably identified this place already. Yeah. So ladies, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much for your nice introduction. <laughs> You're welcome. How are you? Uh, everything's fine. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. And you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you. So um, let me start with a question for Septa. Usually we start uh, this discussion with this very common question that we ask almost all our Kuman instructors who are joining us in live sessions. How did you learn about Kuman? How was your Kuman journey like and why Kuman? Yes, why Kuman? I started 10 years ago, um, at least 11 years ago. So I was a chemical engineer um, working in a, in a huge company. And then I had a meeting with uh, my son's teacher. Mm -hmm. And she said that my son is not able to concentrate and not able to focus. And I was quite surprised, um, not about the fact that he cannot um, concentrate because he was in school for three months. And uh, three months ago, he was uh, playing in the sandbox, <laughs> baking sand cakes. And I knew that uh, he will learn it at school. And therefore, I was so surprised because I was like, but it's your job to um, empower him and to develop him, that he is able to concentrate and to focus. And um, then I went home and I was like, yeah, in a, a silent mood, like, how can I help him? And then I talked to my sister-in-law, I talked to my friends, I talked to my family, and I was like, I need to help him. I need to support him because this teacher is not believing in my son. Mm. But he is so, yeah, he is smart, and he's cute, and he's wonderful as kids are, you know. So uh, how can I help him? How can I support him? And then I found uh, Kumon because my nephew, uh, the, the my sister-in-law's son, he was doing Kumon at that time and his center was closed mm -hmm. for special reasons, I don't know. And then he talked to me and he said, but Aunt, but, uh, Aunt Sefta, if you open a Kumon center, I will be your first student and I will continue to do my Kumon. And I was like, Kumon, what's, what is Kumon? Mm -hmm. I, I've never heard of Kumon. And he said, I can show you. And then he showed me his little booklet little uh, sheets they are doing and uh, I was like oh this seems to be interesting interesting and then I googled uh, Kumon and I found uh, an orientation meeting mm -hmm. and then I stepped into the world of Kumon and since then so I was in the orientation meeting in I think October 2009 and I opened my center in March 2010. Wait a moment. Okay. Yes, so I, I, that's awesome. all about. So I was quickly because you know the fact that Kumon is in our world because a father loved his son. Mm -hmm. I was I found myself in this story because it was the same. Oh, it was similar. It wasn't the same, but it was similar. 
So I was worrying about my son and I wanted to help him like Toru Kumon wanted. And uh, yeah, and then I started my uh, Kumon journey and why I'm doing Kumon today is because for me, personal growth is everything. This is all about. So um, I know that I can develop other children. I can develop myself mm -hmm. and I can inspire the parents also to change. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and to see the um, Kumon world with different eyes and with a different mindset. So it's, it's a can-do world. I have here in my center. It's not a can't do world, you know, it's like a solution oriented world and not an, um, an problem oriented world. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know if, if it's enough. I can speak for hours, so I'm doing cool. And what? <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's actually brilliant that you mentioned it, you know, that you also discovered like a journey for yourself. And I think yeah. that's what also a lot of instructors are experiencing, you know, with Kumon. It's, of course, it's the work with children, but, you know, it's also a, a specific mindset that comes with it. And, um, you know, and you just describe it perfectly. I mean, that's what makes it special as well. And um, especially, you know, this year also we were facing a lot of, uh, difficulties. I think this year has been different for all of us. And, you know, as you just said, the Kumon philosophy is also portraying a can-do um, world, you know. So, of course, like also this year with all these difficulties, um, especially also you, you know, with your children, you still manage to to, to, to learn and, and you know, to, to see them grow and to see them develop and, you know, to actually continue experiencing like the can-do um, yeah, even in times, you know, where schools were closed, where everyone was living a little bit of a difficult time. Yeah. But you said, you know, at the very beginning also, you know, orientation meetings. So for our listeners, maybe it's interesting because that's really a common word. Um, I think orientation meeting. Um, so maybe, you know, um, you can explain to the listeners, um, you know, and to, to, to people who probably don't know what an orientation meeting is, like and that are interested in becoming an instructor you know just to talk about how the start went with you because you know your background you just said is completely different to education um so you you underwent a training as well yes so um 10 years ago it was a little bit different than these times mm. but i think the core um message which goes through all the orientation meeting is is the same so if you want to work in a world full of fulfilling your own dream, you know? So if you want to be the one, you have this image of yourself. Mm -hmm. Each child has an image of himself or himself, herself. I want to be like, yeah? And I had that image. I want to be the mom who supports his own child. So, and I went to the orientation meeting with this image and then you sit there and then you can compare the expectations a franchise, a franchise partner has for you and you can compare if it hits with the expectations you have with your own business. So, and if you are not sure, so please join one of this uh, orientation meetings because then you can train yourself or you can exercise for first time to really put yourself in the shoes of a child mm -hmm. and to feel and to think like a child because this is an ability you need or you you need the the interest to be like this so you can develop this ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes because if you change seat and this is what I, you know, I, I went to the orientation meeting and I returned home differently. Even okay. this little experience, I tried to see my children different. I, I tried to speak different. I tried to act different, you know. And um, if you want to, um, yeah, know if Kumon is good for you or if it's the future for you, then just go to an orientation meeting and after i think half an hour or 40, 45 minutes i do not know how long it lasts these days but then well, you have a clue yeah. yeah then you have a clue if it's okay for you or not 
Yeah, and then you uh, go to a different type of training because mm -hmm. at, and at my time in, in the past, it was like a PowerPoint uh, presentation, sitting in a big uh, room without any contact to children. Mm -hmm. But then training changed yeah. five years ago. And now it's like in real life with real children and to have all the shining eyes, to have all these wow well moments on yeah. site, you know, and even now you can have all these wow well moments even through Zoom or online, same, yeah. If you trust the child, if you believe in the child, and if you know you this child very well, you can help him or her to make his own steps. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe, you know, it's also interesting, uh, what, what you just mentioned, because, you know, you had training 10 years ago, but you also already said, you know, it has changed. So, um, I think it's also important, um, you know, maybe uh, I think it's important to also say, you know, that the instructors are in, in contact with each other, right. And that you are conducting more trainings because, you know, with also, um, with, with, with our change in training, um, you know, you also like you also changed and maybe like you also learned something new. So like, you know, it's a continuous journey. Um, I think that's also what you said, you know, when we were preparing for, for, for today's event, I think that was quite remarkable that you even mentioned that. Um, it is a journey for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's like family. So in my center, it feels like being a huge family. You know, I have my kids, uh, my students, my own kids, my family, but I have the families outside. I have my kids um, here in the center, but I have also the kids in different uh, centers. So like I have um, an VSG and voluntary study group with someone from the UK. Mm -hmm. So, and we are visiting each other via Zoom. So we are doing Zoom together. We are, you know, it's like, it's endless. It's limitless. It's learning mm -hmm. together with all who wants to change. You know, if you put your own ego beside and you consider the development of the child and then you find um, like-minded instructors, yes, like myself. So I feel, I can feel the instructors who think and feel like I do. And then it's, it's you know, your family is getting bigger and bigger and the learning is even more dense. It's getting more dense. It's, it's the right word it's having a big density it's it's you know it's like um it's not superficial it's not only yeah he can do plus one it's like why the feelings behind and even the instructors we are all changing and inspiring each other yeah yeah and anyone who wants to be a part of the of this world my door is always open just step in mm -hmm. It is really inspiring because after you started, as you mentioned, 11 years ago, but with what you're saying, it still feels like, you know, uh, you're still filled with so much gusto. I mean, you're really into what you're doing and always thinking about children. And yeah, it's just so nice to hear these words from you, you know. Um, considering almost a decade ago, well, it's quite a long time already, plus the pandemic. So we assume there is a lot of changes, yeah. Not only mm. in our center, but also in our in our environment with the children and uh, their families. How are you able to cope like, with these changes? As always, you know, if there is a change, um, it maybe it's sad, you know, and we need maybe some time to be sad about that yeah but instead of seeing a problem then because it's actually a problem but if you think the whole time it's a problem it's a problem mm. there's no solution so if you identify a problem then you need to think about the an answer or you need to think about the solution so and this is what i've done so i i said to my uh, kids so this is the situation now as the luck the lockdown it was the 13th of um, 
the 13th of March was the last center day here in my center. And then lockdown ca came. And then I said, you know, I don't know when we will meet, but I will do everything that we will met, meet soon. And they were like, I know, we know that. So, and then I invited them to have a common uh, Zoom session. And then we spoke together. I asked them too. So I said, you know, I searched for some platforms like Skype and WhatsApp and FaceTime. And Zoom was the only um, device or platform which allowed me to see a lot of students at the same time or ma as many students at the same time. You know, and they were like, oh, this is a new world, you know, and this was my introduction. So welcome in our new world, because this is now how we want to, this is now how we will deal with it. So let's try to find out how we will, will, it will work for us. So, and then we, we push all the buttons and we, you know, we, we discovered Zoom for us and we had this Zoom um, discovering sessions and then we put some rules Mm -hmm. So we knew we can't speak all together at the same time. So what shall we do? And yeah. if I have a question and if I don't want you to see my background and, you know, and these were questions that the kids asked me. And then we put our rules together and then we started. So I needed one week after uh, lockdown and we started uh, with the online. And I had this image and I told my students that I want, the online center as similar as possible to my real center. This is my dream and this is my wish. And I, even, I invited all of my students and their parents to help us to let this wish become true. Mm -hmm. And it became true. So our center now, it's like real center, you know. We are doing all together in one room. I have no separate rooms anymore. It's like here, where I'm sitting now, in my, as I'm in my center now. So the English um, doing uh, students are next to the mass doing students. It's the same online. And mm -hmm. these days, we combine even both. So we are doing on-site center together with online center. And we have this hybrid uh, model. model and you know, I'm always asking, how do you feel? And they were like, we are doing this, right? <laughs> we are rocking this. I think it's good. <laughs> you know, and for me, it's like I give everything or the most I can for my students on site to develop their abilities to study at home. And then I can observe them studying at home. It's like, because before Corona, I had no chance to see them at home. True. And this opens a totally new world for us. Yeah. You know, and they're not asking. And I'm like, you know, I can now, if I sit at home, I can see one of my students sitting at home, doing their Kumon without asking mom, without asking dad, strong, self-confident and curious. Yes, that's brilliant. It's also like, it's really, um, you know, it's interesting that you already mentioned that yourself. And I think that's, that's just brilliant because um, like, you know, online is indeed a factor that will, you know, that will be in, like normal from now on for, for a lot of human centers and, you know, for also our new instructors, I think. And um, it's just amazing to, you know, to hear you working for, for you know, quite some years now. Um, in the center and appreciating all the opportunities that you've been given with online and it's also it's great and it's remarkable I think like it was also in your center like the little ones already like mastering and basically ruling online it's just um, yeah it's, it's great to see you know how well it's working and how you know how well also the children are adapting and I think it's also a big chance you know for maybe reaching children that are not as close um, to the center, you know, sometimes you're also like, you know, you are, your center is based in, in noise, um, really close to Düsseldorf, you know, so people or like children maybe also coming from further distances um, in bigger towns. So, you know, for also parents, it might be really convenient to also know, oh, okay, you know, what like my instructors actually also there for my child online, right? So I don't have to put it in a bus for an hour to go to the center. Um, although I really love your center. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like just by seeing the background, like all the 
pictures that also the children were drawing, just like expressing their love for Kumon. That's just, ah, yeah. You know, this is our home. This is our space. Yeah. And they know it. And the parents and I appreciate their effort, the kids' effort. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, the parents appreciate also that we are really trying hard to combine these both worlds. I know, I do not know if some of my parents are watching, but I know they, um, that's really hard at the beginning. If something, uh, something, is, something is new, it's quite hard to have the routine to get all together, you know, and to have it like in former times. So, but the, the kids need a chance. We need a chance to, to exercise, to experience. And if an adult as I am, and you are, if you're open for new things, so you will be surprised how smart the kids are. <laughs> they teach us a lot. <laughs> really a lot they taught me how to change the picture on zoom i didn't know that's yeah <laughs> so just open your heart and just be open for all the the voices which will reach you the the uh, voices of the parents the kids voices human franchise partner voices you know i think it's um it's so important that we need to work together, you know, in one direction. No mm -hmm. doubt, no doubting, no judging. There's no wrong, there's no correct, there's no incorrect. If you try something new, you need the experience. True. Yeah, that's also, I think, a very good message to not only the new instructors that we have, but also like to the franchise candidates who are still considering, like, should I proceed with this? Should I not? Like, they're still in the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. I think that really holds true what you said. You know, be accepting. Yeah. Right. Time really flies when we're discussing uh, these things and we're, when we're having these live sessions with our Kumon instructors. Um, maybe uh, we can have one last question, yeah? Or maybe one last topic before we end the, um, this session. Maybe um, a question to Julia, yeah? So probably there are viewers who, as I mentioned, are considering this process um, or who are interested in becoming a Puman instructor. What should be the first thing that they should do? What's the first step for them? Watch the live event. <laughs> uh, and get, no, like the very first step is, you know, um, we, we have our contact forms. Uh, where you can get um, in contact, you know, with, with our franchise team, which you are part of as well, uh, Meryl, and, you know, um, basically, you know, attend one of the orientation meetings that SEFTA was mentioning at the very beginning. So, you know, you can leave the contact details uh, in, in the form and we will get in contact and, um, you know, invite you to one of these orientation meetings where we will first meet, um, you know, put, basically put, put ourselves together in the shoes of children, but, um, also, you know, to discover um, the potentials maybe in the markets, depending on where you want to open up a center, right? And we are um, offering Human around the world, worldwide. We are with the German office responsible for the European market. So, you know, depending on where you want to open up a center, you will meet with field managers as well on the orientation meeting already. Um, and um, yeah, basically also, you know, talk a little bit about the, about the local market, about your ideas, about your, you know, uh, it doesn't, we always say it doesn't really matter where you're coming from background wise because what unites us all in at Pumon is you know the love and the passion to develop children and that basically like the um yeah like the heart that comes with it and we provide you and you know in your further process we will provide you of course a lot of assistance so uh you will have marketing webinars marketing workshops you will meet up with social media team who trains you um, you will meet up, of course, with the field managers a lot of times to not only discover the market, but um, you will also have a training circle um, where you meet with the materials team, you know, who will train you, who you also, where you also will meet um, like children um, in, in real centers and, you know, learn observing. So you will meet up with other instructors. So you have a whole 
circle, which can, for some instructors, it takes three to four months, uh, which is normal. We, I, I, you know, that's like kind of the, um, yeah, like the, the time span we're talking. Um, but yeah, but the very, but the ultimate very first step is just get in contact with us. Get in contact, ask us any questions that you want, um, any doubts that you have, maybe any, any, any ideas. Um, yeah, talk to lovely Meryl and her team and get to know us. And we are always really excited to welcome new candidates. Um, yeah, and hear their stories. In fact, those who are viewing this uh, video right now, if you have questions, please feel free to type in your questions in the comment sections there and we will try to answer them. Or if you will view this video later on, you can also do that later on and we will check this video uh, every now and then. You can also just message us at our Facebook um, page or email us or call us. We will be posting as well in the comment section, the email and the phone number so you can reach us. And there. So thank you again, Julia and Sefta for your time this afternoon. It was really lovely speaking to both of you and to everyone else who is watching us right now. So I wish you all a nice afternoon, a lovely rest of the day and till next time. Bye. And see you soon. Bye. Thank you very much for your time. I hope it stopped in <laughs> the light. <laughs> and, uh, we got a message that it has stopped, I think. Yeah. Yes. And if not. <laughs> 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 so let me stop the recording. And